Now here at home, we often talk about lead and water. Now a mapping project reveals elevated lead levels in soil all around Chicago. The study's lead author, Andrew Marganot, an assistant professor of crop sciences with the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, joins us now. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. I understand you sampled parkways, backyards. I mean, it's dirt that we come in contact with. Can you put into perspective just how bad it is with our soil here in Chicago? It's of concern, but not a reason to be very scared is how I would phrase it. So to give you a sense of this, all soil is going to have some amount of lead. And typically it's about 20, what we call part per million. So PPM. So 20 is the natural value. And as you can see on this map, we found an average across the city of 11 times higher than that, about 220 PPM. So 20 is normal. We're at 220 on average across the city. Now, how much is too much? The EPA, federal and state, says it's 400. So in that sense, we're definitely more than natural by a lot, but we're under the federal U.S. and Illinois EPA guidelines. However, some states like California's EPA, they say 80 is the number. So in that case, most of the city is above that more uh, careful threshold of 80. Andrew, so that's why it's hard to say, but, uh, oh, yeah. excuse me. Andrew, we were just looking at the map, and it looked like to me that certain communities uh, have more lead in the soil. You say there's a strong environmental justice reality here. Can you explain how African-American communities are disproportionately impacted by this? Certainly. This is the ugly story of industrialization in this country. A lot of black Americans were forced to live in redlined areas or by virtue of redlining. And oftentimes these were the less desirable parts of a city, which are largely the high industrial activity parts. And these areas typically have high levels of contaminants in soils and water in the air. Lead is but one of those. Uh, and so this would be consistent with what we've heard about how there's lots of communities, especially African Americans in the south side of Chicago, where children have elevated levels of blood lead and our map of soil lead bears out that soil could be another contribution to childhood exposure. And of course, we know that lead exposure is damaging, especially in that early childhood. So what do we do with this information? How do we use it in our daily lives? Great question. Our motivation for this work was to take a first step, never been done before, of broadly speaking at city scale, where's the lead and how much? So the way that we would suggest that folks use this map is to look at where you are. And if you're in a uh, hot spot, a darker color, red, then you're going to probably want to invest in a soil test and test your backyard. Uh, anything that's bare that could be kicking up dust, so kids or even pets, that might be a potential inhalation risk or if you have a garden. So I would say uh, use this as a first assessment to decide, do you invest the uh, 60 bucks into your soil test for lead? All right, Andrew Marganot, assistant professor at the U of I. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much for having me.